Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, I think just a minute ago, I just got buzzed on my laptop and it distracted me. That's why it was a, a minute of distraction. This but a screen came on and lots of lights went on and it was saying that my Facebook has been uh, taken over, that I have to call this number, that I have to do this and this and that. You know what? And that's exactly what today's message is. Welcome to the fear factor. So this is Lisa Bubari, your expert hypnotherapist and women's wellness expert. And today we're going to be talking about fear. Um, you know, when talk, they talk about fear in the self-help world, it is known as false emotions appearing real. So what are we afraid of? What are you afraid of? Yes, the biggest thing that people are afraid of, the number one, is fear of dying. It's true. There is also fear of that cripples so many people is fear of speaking in the public. Believe it or not, one of the uh, most fear factor in life outside of death and uh, is the fear of speaking in public. So what does that mean? And when I was searching to do my talk a long, long time ago, Napoleon Hill said, fear can be both a blessing and a curse. So depending on how and when one yields to it or rejects it. So the fear of failure attracts a lot of people. It's like the fear of failure, like so many people like Tony Robbins or uh, a, a lot of people I know that they say, I am, I've lost a lot of money. I am down to my like uh, last $10 or $400. I came to this country with $400. And because of my fear of the embarrassment or not being good enough and everything, it made me stronger. It made me better. But fear is opposite of faith and do good. So one of the things that we are talking about is there are seven basic uh, fears that hold people back. And it gives some people, it holds them back because we're afraid and we doubt ourselves and we don't move forward because of all the self-talk, the negative talk, um, the, the way we grew up, it's like poor mind mentality, the household. If you have grown up in a household that everything was, no, it can't happen. We can't do this. Don't do that. Uh, don't go. Um, all the don'ts and we can't then that's the mentality you grow up. So fear of poverty is one of the th biggest things that pushes people to excel. That's number one. It harbors people and allows their mind to dwell on circumstances and things that they don't want to. So a part of that fear factor of poverty is two ways everything in life is a two-way right the good the bad the right the wrong and the up and down white black everything i know some people call it gray the gray is how we move in there so the fear factor can cripple you or it can push you and give you a boost now fear of criticism and that's one of the things is what will they say how will I show up? And what if I am wronged? 
What if they make a mockery out, out of me? What if something like that? So allow me to talk about this. About a year ago, I had a client. I've talked about this uh, at another time. Hello, how are you? Uh, I talked about this because I had a client who came in here and a very successful lady, hairdresser, she came in and successful in a way that she gets called to do uh, the hair of celebrities. And when she came to me, it was because of her fear factor for an ele to go into elevators. Now, you might turn around and say, what's the big deal? She's claustrophobic. No, because she had no problem being in small places or being a dark place or in a, like um, going into a pantry and close the door. So it's not the being confined, but it was just the elevator of going up and down. Now, so why did she come to a hypnotherapist? Because she uh, had already done all kinds of therapy. She had gone and done her own therapy, uh, her traumas and everything. It had nothing to do with her childhood. It had nothing to do with her upbringing. So it had nothing to do, well, it had a little to do with her trauma because when a trauma is not healed it shows up in different ways and it may stay dormant in us as adults and it may surface or resurface i should say because it's like a boomerang it resurfaces at at a time and a place that something triggers it and it can be a trigger that you may not understand consciously because the subconscious mind holds that information there for such a long time. It's like it archives information because even right now I can ask you, do you remember your first grade teacher or your bestie, your best friend, your BFF when you were uh, first grade or even elementary and a smile may come uh, to your face. Or I can say, if you have ever been bullied when you were in school, you might remember that one. Why? Because that, that trauma, the traumatic experience, and it can be a very bad experience or a very light experience. It doesn't matter. And that information, that vision, that sound, that smell, it can stay in your memory bank for a long time. So when we are talking about that Fear of criticism, one word can spark it. Hers was being in an elevator that goes up and down. So through hypnosis, one of the things that I did is always and always, I've said this before, is to strengthen the self-esteem. I can do this. Okay? That's one of the things that Napoleon Hill says. In order for you to move and change a habit, you must have two words in place. I can't, I will. Yes, Napoleon Hill of Think and Grow Rich. So a part of Think and Grow Rich is also a mindset. A part of fear factor and coming over and overcoming a fear factor, that bridge is also a mindset. So everything about money is also emotions connected to money is also emotions connected to fear factor of loss or success now success is up loss is down so i work with so many ways of analogy that a client understands now hers was i want to be successful being a success, she had celebrity clients. And one of the things that she wanted to get over this elevator, going the fear of getting into an elevator to go, was going to penthouses, especially going to high rises down on Wilshire Boulevard and Beverly Hills area. 
that's the higher she goes and she goes at different hours, especially celebrities or actors and actresses at wee hours of the day, that means she can earn more. Because of her fear factor of not getting into elevator, she could not do the high rise clients and the ones in, in the penthouse and the ones who would call her, let's say at five o'clock in the morning, getting ready to go on a set for a movie or to be in a studio. So what did that do? It hindered her success in one way. And another one was maybe I'm not good enough. So it was showing up in many other ways. That fear factor was not real. It was appearing as real. Do you relate to this? And I want you to take a moment and think to yourself, what parts of my life am I not showing up fully? That I am holding myself back. Or you can turn around and say, what am I afraid of? What am I stopping myself from and not taking the next step or going to the next level? And what is it that I can do? You can turn around. Yes, Napoleon Hill also says one of the things is to have your belief and your belief system is to know this is what I want and I want it so bad that nothing else matters and that's what I want. I want to be the million dollar or I want the million dollar home or I want the million dollar success or I want this man, I want this woman, I want this relationship or I want to beat this pain. I want to beat this disease. And when your belief system is so clear and becomes a passion, a burning passion within you, that it's like nothing can stop me. That's when we take steps because it's like not a fear factor can stop me. Actually, I turn that fear factor into fuel instead of pause, right? Instead of freeze. So if I am in fear, instead of freezing, I turn it into fuel factor. But I want you to be aware of and what is your passion and what are you fueling? Because there is positive fuel and there is negative fuel. So, so uh, there is another factor is the fear of ill health, right? And because if I become so famous, if I become so rich, if I become there, then who am I overshadowing? or stepping or stomping on to be there? Do I have to be rude, crude, shrewd to get to where I want? Sometimes you need to have the mentality of it, but not become it. So there's so much in play. So back to my client and the elevator. I remember few months ago that I talked about that I walked to uh, we walked together and I got into the elevator with her and there was no one else and then the elevator door opened and I saw her with the trepidations and everything because that's where anxiety comes in she was having anxiety to go up and down the elevator but when we came back, she could conquer. She did conquer the elevator factor. And when we came back, here is one of the things. In our session, because of the action she took going up and down the elevator, working with the subconscious, I asked her in hypnosis, what does the elevator mean? And she said, success. So success if she is holding herself 
back from succeeding to the level of celebrities, going to the penthouses, going into the high rises. Lo and behold, she was holding herself back because her sister was not as successful and she loved her sister and she wanted everything for her sister and she wanted to rise with her sister and it's like I'm not going to be as successful unless my sister is so do you see how wonderful our subconscious is how loving and kind our subconscious can be because your subconscious mind has absolutely no indication of the good the bad if you are poor if you are rich the information that you put in there the subconscious mind has no feeling it does not understand any different of if you say i am a million dollar i have a million dollar hand or i have a very weak hand but what you put in there as your feeling it's you insert the labels and the information that we place on there and we consciously it's the conscious mind that has the emotional factor that places it there so another part of the fear is loss of liberty and that means if I get to that level, I may lose my freedom of who I am here. It's one of the things of some celebrities that they want to become so famous. And when they become famous, they try to hide themselves not to be recognized because of they lose factor of their freedom. So hers was beautiful. Once we got to the level of understanding why she is holding herself back and if she is ready to rise up her occasion, embrace her gifts and step to the level that she wants to be, she desires to be, she's worked so hard to be. Can you go into that elevator? Yes, I can. Will you go into that elevator and rise to the occasion and work with the celebrities who ask for you because you are so good? And what I did was a small little shift and said, what if this is not about you and you're doing this for them? See, it takes it away from the person and that burden of um, all the hesitation am I good enough am I free enough all the fear factors and I turned it around and I said just be grateful for your gift and everything that you're doing and if you remember this is an act of service you're doing it for them you're going for them because you are making them beautiful you're making them get ready for them being in the limelight and it's not about you oh my god it was like boom yes when she said it yes and I asked the subconscious to agree and the subconscious said yes because there is ways as a clinical hypnotherapist we must get the agreement of the conscious and subconscious and when there's the immersion and the yes factor from both sides it's like what well, we call it easy peasy it's a sailing it's a smooth sailing and you know what this is why I love the work that I do it's how I do it it's evoking what was it's understanding acknowledging the barrier embracing what is the reality of who they are right here right now in order for us to evolve to the next level so when we talk about the fear factors again is to remember as fears are nothing more than a state of mind 
and it's Napoleon Hill from Think and Grow Rich because here are the seven factors. Fear of poverty, fear of criticism, fear of ill health, fear of loss of love, fear of liberty, and yes, old age, which is fear of death. Now, when you think to yourself, what am I afraid of? Is there something that I have not been able to move forward and it's giving me anxiety? It's making me um, doubt myself? I'm creating, creating this interpretation and I go into this um, anxiety. I get sweaty palms and everything and I feel as if my temperature rises and I am turning red and I can't breathe. I feel like my throat is shutting down. I can't speak. Remember, I, told, I talked about fear of speaking in public. By all means, give me a call. Even taking a test, the fear factor of test taking you have no idea how it can cripple some people. And you may know the subject so well, but you can't pass that securities exam, the med cap or the bar, and you can do so by retraining your mindset and working with the subconscious mind and just a little bit in few sessions you can go and take your exam and have a smooth smiley so if this message resonated with you and you understand that perhaps there was something you are ready or you know someone who wants to take the next step and be the success by all means give me a call. I'm Lisa Bubari, your expert women's wellness and working with your mind. It's time to heal within. By all means, share, click, follow me, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, God bless, and may the universal light surround you. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.